What is up guys? I'm Kyle at Fortune. In this video, we're doing a walk around of my 2020 Chevy Colorado. Oh. So when we bought this truck, we weren't really looking for a Chevy Colorado specifically. I'm more of a full size kind of guy. So what I was looking for was something that had a lot more room, both inside and in the bed to help us with moving all that stuff around and carrying our passengers comfortably. We definitely weren't thinking about getting a truck this size. So real quick, we'll go over some of the specs that the Colorado has, and then we'll get into some of the mods we've done to get it to where it is right now. In 2020, they had a 3.6 liter. This truck's putting out about 300 horsepower, and I think it's around 275 torque, somewhere around there. And those numbers aren't that impressive compared to a lot of the full-size trucks, but compared to the ones that I had about 10 years plus ago, this thing is a beast. Those other trucks can't do anything close to what this can do, especially as far as tow capacity goes. This truck can do about 7,000 pounds. I've mentioned that in a bunch of my other videos because I'm always so impressed that a truck this size can do that kind of weight. As far as fuel economy goes, that was a huge player for us getting this Colorado because I wanted something to make those long trips in. And I also didn't want to just kill the budget while we were getting there and back or, you know, using it as a daily driver, which I did for about a year. So this truck's got about 22,000 miles on it since we've owned it. So it's got a total of about 42,000. The fuel economy when we started out when it was stock was really good. It's supposed to do 17 city, 24 highway. I never really kept track of those individually, but I do know that it was getting about 25 on average. So that was combined about 50-50 for me. So I was just driving it like an old man, like I pretty much drive everything and the truck is getting great mileage. Well, once we decided to take that bumper off and get rid of the air dam and we put this high clearance one on, that dropped to about 21 miles per gallon and then after putting the roof rack and the rooftop tent on there, now it's all the way down to about 20 is pretty much the best I can get it, which is still really good for a truck this size and all of the stuff that it can do. So this is the crew cab short bed, pretty standard option, especially with uh, the 3.6 four wheel drive. This one is an LT, so it's not the Z71 or anything special like that, ZR2, nothing. It's, it's just a regular truck. It actually didn't even come with a tow package, which we'll get into it here in a second when I start showing you all the mods. So let's check those out. So none of these mods are really anything crazy. Like I wouldn't even consider this a build really, but because it's kind of unique to us, like we didn't use the same manufacturer for everything. We didn't get sponsored for any of it. So for that reason, putting all those different parts together, I do kind of call it a build. Right away, the first thing I knew we were gonna need to do to this Colorado was get our towing up to speed. Like I said, this one didn't come with the tow package, which means it also doesn't come with the G80 locker in the rear axle. So we don't have that. We don't have the brake controller inside and we didn't have a trailer hitch, but we had been flat towing the Samurai for a while and we needed to continue doing that. So what we did is we went out and bought the Kurt hitch here. And then we've just got a couple different ball accessories for whatever you're trying to do. And this hitch was super easy to install. I think it looks pretty good. The only negative thing I can say about this hitch right here is that the safety chain loops hang down pretty low. Eventually I'm planning on chopping those off, either throwing some holes right here or maybe welding on some new holes to put the safety chains on. But with that on there, we were able to start flat towing the Samurai because the Chevy did come with the standard four pin that's in there. Once we had the funds saved up and we were ready to start towing a flatbed trailer, I knew we were gonna need a brake controller and we also needed to upgrade to the seven pin. So we've got that on there now. Uh, we've got the seven pin so we can have the brakes and all that for our flatbed. But the other part that goes with that is a brake controller. We ended up going with this one from Kurt. This is the Spectrum brake controller. And this one's pretty cool because it's so small. You can see it's just hidden under here. I kind of just centered it on this piece of the panel right here. I'd say it's about two inches in diameter. It might be even less, but instead of your typical brake controllers that are kind of like the squeeze method, with the numbers on it. This one, you can just hold it in if you wanna test out your brakes or if you wanna go through the settings, you can just press it and you can adjust the settings like that. It's really easy to use and it's really easy to get feedback off of it because it just used the lights instead of numbers and stuff like that. The next thing that we needed was something that every Colorado owner seems to go through right now. You see it on the groups and the forums a lot and that is the air dam on the front bumper. When this truck was stock, I don't think we could get over a rock like this big without touching it, especially coming out here with all these rocks. I just knew we had to get something else before we were gonna put a lift in tires on it. So we went with this bumper from Chassis Unlimited. This is the Octane series. 
This bumper gets a lot of mixed reviews because it is so extreme. You can see how much is cut out on this bumper and it is kind of a unique look. Like there really aren't any other trucks that are running bumpers like these. I will say on a stock Colorado, it kind of looks a little out of place. Like it, it just looks like something's maybe missing. But once you put a lift in tires on there, it makes it look like the truck has a way bigger lift than it does. And I think it looks really good. Just to be clear, we don't have a lift or aftermarket tires on this thing. But this bumper is awesome because we have all of that clearance in the front now. And then you can see the thing that stands out is these lights. So it has spots for six pods. We've got two amber on each side and then one white. It also can hold a winch right here. I've got a little flip up license plate there. And it's got these cutouts so you can get in there and get to your winch controls. Also has some tow hooks on it. So this bumper is pretty loaded for a front bumper. It's three piece, three sixteenth steel, and it comes with this like textured powder coat. Looks awesome. Really like that bumper. To match that, we ended up going with the Chassis Unlimited low profile rear bumper. And this bumper is super slick. You actually have to trim off a piece of the bed down here to get this to fit. Without any lift, we have a huge amount of ground clearance in the back. This overhang's pretty negligible now, especially because it's just so far off the ground. But this bumper has got all the same stats. Still has that little step in there that the stock bumper had. It's not as big, but it's still there. It's got that textured powder coat, some shackles for D-rings. And then this one has a couple LED light cutouts that you can throw your own pods in like we did. We just got two white ones in there. Love having those white lights in there because when you back up at night, this camera kind of gets gained out a little bit and you can't see too well, but when you turn those things on, you can see everything perfectly. Really cool setup. One thing about this rear bumper though, is that it's not really compatible with a hitch. So in our case, it wasn't compatible with this Kurt hitch. I had to cut kind of up at an angle right there and then all this piece that was down there. But most people don't even know that I had to do that because I think it looks pretty good still. You just have this bar hanging down, but really I just look at it as more armor for off-roading. And the reason why it's not compatible with a hitch is because most people that are putting these kind of bumpers on there, I think aren't really into doing any off-roading so they don't need the clearance. Behind this license plate, this one's also a flip up cover. There's a hitch right there. There's a, a receiver right there that you can put some accessories into if you need to but we just use this one because we pretty much only use it for towing something that you can get multiple things out of are these roof racks we wanted one for a few reasons the first being that it can carry more cargo up on top we have some pelican boxes that we can lay on there gas cans or you know putting pieces of lumber on there from the store can just kind of strap it down to the, the sides there it also holds huge light bar which is really sweet so it kind of lights up all the night we have some lights that you can mount right here that shine off to the side but we haven't installed those yet. I don't know why, I'm just kind of being lazy about it. But that roof rack just helps with all that stuff, plus getting that wind up over our rooftop tent. So the rooftop tent serves as a lot for us. Uh, really, it's our way to get up off the ground, especially when we're camping at a place like this where there's a ton of rocks on the ground. We don't have to worry about finding a flat spot, putting pads down, making sure, you know, there's a trench line behind us. If it's gonna rain, you can see it's pretty muggy out today. It might rain. We don't have to worry about that when we're in the rooftop tent because we just leave the rain fly on this thing and you can see how high up off the ground it is. It's just not a factor for us. This one is the Roof Nest Condor XL. You can see how long it is. It actually is a little bit longer than the truck bed. This thing's huge. It's massive. And when you're like us, you've got a lot of gear you're taking out camping or you have kids, which we've got a little boy. It's so nice to have something this big. I mean, we can all three lay down in there. Tons of room after our feet. I mean, literally feet of room after, you know, we end. And then you can also have a bunch of room on the sides. Like we have so much extra room in there when we're camping. It's great. We can store all of our stuff up there and make sure it keeps dry and it's off the ground all of that so the rooftop tent serves as really our base camp with this truck most of the time because we'll tow our samurai or maybe take another vehicle out there with a friend whatever this is kind of like our home that we just leave camp at and then we can go wheel away from it also the rooftop tent packs up really fast so if we do want to take it we can just pop it up real quick close it down real quick whatever we need to do and we can get on the move so this tent's mounted up there with this thorax rack from chassis unlimited their stuff is really cool i love how simple it is really good quality you can see like all the welds on here just look great like how the hardware goes in how all of this stuff mounts up uh, you can barely see it in there but right up there it says chassis unlimited so if you didn't have this rooftop tent it has some pretty cool like cutouts in there overall this system for the rooftop tent in the bed works really well so this is a 12 inch rack i measured it one time and i think from the center right here to the truck bed it's about 
36 inches so we have a lot of room still we have the spare tire in there because we wanted that ground clearance to hang down pretty low on the bottom so we took it out and it's just strapped in there and that works out just fine for us although when we go up tire size we're not going to be able to keep it under the bar how we have it right now it's probably going to have to be moved a little bit aft or maybe go sideways on the side of the truck one of the first lighting mods we did was these ditch brackets from cali rays holding some 3e pods here and you can see these ones are angled down and outboard a little bit because it really helps us get the light out to where those tires are turning so we're not just turning into darkness we can actually see where we're going speaking of lights that comes to my personal favorite mod which is the switch controller. This switch controller up here replaces where the sunglasses drop down usually goes. This thing is just awesome. I have it wired so it's all the way off even at night. And then once you press one of the buttons, it turns on that light and then it illuminates everything. So if you have a ton of lights on and then you decide you need to turn them off because of oncoming traffic or whatever, you can hit this button in the middle and they all turn off. So it's a pretty cheap controller but this 3D printed part that goes up here is really cool. And we have a ton of lights on here and it's just a lot of fun to be able to play with all these. I know a lot of people like to put all the lights and stuff on their truck so it looks cool. And for sure, I agree. I think this truck looks a lot better with these lights on there, but these really are just a huge tool when you're off-roading. If you ever go out at night, I mean, these are just something you really need. If you watch any videos of guys going out and doing any overlanding or rock crawling at night, it's really hard to do when you can't see. So these ones on the bumper, these white pods, when we're out at night, we usually turn those two on and then these ditch lights on to light up everything. And that's usually enough light. When we're out at a place like this, that goes on for a long ways and it's really dark. We'll turn that big light bar on and really lights everything up. Then we've got these amber pods right here. These ones are great to run in fog, snow, and dust. I actually run these all the time during the day when we're out on the trail just to make sure that there's a light shining through the trees there and that some guys on dirt bikes or quads or side by sides don't come around the corner and just slam into us and they're not so bright that it, you know blinds everybody coming on because the color really helps with that kind of already gone in here a couple times but you can see our interior in here is pretty clean everything looks pretty new still really uh, even after having a kid in here and doing all of our camping we get this thing detailed every once in a while it's just stayed nice and clean you know using this storage under here flipping those seats up we just haven't had any problems with this truck and it's made it a lot of fun to own and work on because we never really have to fix anything we're just upgrading stuff the last real mod that we've done is also one of the early ones and they're these clips from pro clip these both just kind of snap into place this one holds a Galaxy Note 10 Plus, which is the cell phone that I use. Super sturdy, and you can twist this all kinds of different ways. You can go landscape if you want for, you know, doing your mapping and stuff, or you can just put it up portrait like a regular phone and the, another cool benefit is it sticks up to like right here so I can record over the hood if anything shady's going on in front of me too these ones just clip to the vent and these hold a couple radios I put a couple uh Balfangs on there and a CB radio if somebody's using that I'll bring that one out too really like all the products that Pro Clip USA makes every truck that I have from now on is probably going to use those because they're just so well made and they have like an accessory for everything you can mount things all over the place they used to even have one where you can mount stuff down there and i'm not sure they might have one that you can put right here on the vent but really my favorite thing about these is that you can just unclip these when you're done with them this one uses a little bit of adhesive tape right here but it's not a big deal the other side just unclips from the vent and then this side is all pressure so you can kind of just squeeze it and take it out i love that you don't have to modify or put any glue down or anything that's going to last and stay on your car you can just take that stuff out when you're done with it or if you have a different phone all you have to do is replace this part right here and the mounting bases still work ton of accessories for everything really love that stuff so really, I think it's a pretty simple build. Almost all of this stuff was bolt-on. We did have to do a little bit of drilling like to get that roof rack in and stuff, but nothing crazy. There wasn't any like crazy cutting or welding to get anything on there. It was all pretty straightforward. And I think we have a very capable overlander. I say overlander uh, with caution because, you know, we don't really go overlanding in this. We do more of like weekend trips and just using it as base camp. But I think this style is kind of referred to as an overlander rig now. And this thing does just great with the power, the economy, the reliability, the looks, all of it is just like right there on the top of my list. I would honestly rank this as 10 out of 10. I love everything about it. A lot of people ask me why I didn't go Tacoma because 
usually anyone that wants to do this stuff uses Tacoma. I love Toyota trucks. I think the Toyota Tacoma is like one of the best looking midsize trucks out there. Um, my personal reasons were really just for that initial purchase cost. Toyota is really high up there. And then I felt like it was behind this truck in its class as far as fuel economy, towing, um, the interior styling, all that kind of stuff. But definitely where that Tacoma beats this is gonna be in the looks and I think also the resale value. But this one still holds pretty good. It's five years, really strong. So this truck isn't perfect though. There's a lot of stuff I still want to do. I kind of build my trucks in phases. So I consider this phase one. Phase one is complete. Uh, as an off-road guy, somebody that has a channel that's about off-roading, other people are surprised that it doesn't have a lift in tires yet. Well, really for us, we just didn't need it with this truck because we don't do any really hard trails with this. We have a Samurai and a YJ right now. We had a Suburban when we were just starting this channel. And those are the trucks that we take out on the trail. We need this more uh, doing like family stuff, longer road trips to these destinations, towing, uh, you know, things like that. So we hadn't done that yet, but that's definitely something that's coming because we do want that clearance. One of the biggest issues I've had with this Colorado off-road is the frame clearance is really low. There's not a lot of fruit hanging down in the middle that's gonna get hung up on stuff, but the frame itself is super low. So we have scraped that, you know, on just like dirt really. Um, so nothing major, but yeah, that's a problem. I wanna get it lifted up a little bit. So I, what we're looking at right now is doing a two to three inch leveling kit and then putting a one inch lock in the rear. Basically just seeing how that goes and how well it does. And then from there, we might go up to a nice coilover option up front with some add a leaf in the back or something for more payload and uh, you know better towing ride all of that stuff as far as tires go these are the stock 255 65 17s i believe is what they are they're about a 30 inch tire so they're pretty small in the truck world for now but compared to like my samurai only has 31s on it so it's all relative to the truck but still i think these ones are a little bit small uh, you can see the back spacing is not very good the tires don't stick out far but tires in this size are really cheap compared to all the other trucks and you know even when you need to go e range or whatever range you need for your application i think it's a pretty cool tire size to have the problem is there just aren't a lot of options especially if you want to get into mud terrain which is something i do so i think once we get that lift on there we already have some method wheels to throw on here that have better back spacing and we'll get those tires out a little bit more we are going to go up to a 265 70 on a 17 inch wheel and really that's a 31 and a half so 30 inches versus 31 and a half we'll get about three quarters inch of uh, clearance under those tires and then with that lift up front if it's a two inch lift i mean we're looking at about two and a half inches of clearance on the ground which is pretty good for having such a small lift on there as far as our other mods i have some rock sliders to weld up and put under the doors right there so we'll have a nice protection there uh, we need to get a winch in the front i'm looking at probably a 10,000, uh, probably a worn going in the front there i don't mind having a roller fair lead and steel cable I actually like it i do it a lot for work so i'm really comfortable with it i think those cables are fine if you know what you're doing and you know what to watch out for they do weigh a little bit more this than the synthetic but i'm not that worried about it it's not like we're trying to climb up a rock face with this thing we're just going out on the trail eventually in the back i would like to get a deck system or something similar that way we can lock up our items keep them dry store them more organized and you know keep them in the truck you can lock the drawers themselves and you can put the tailgate up that locks so i think it'd be kind of hard to get anything out of there if you you know didn't want somebody stealing them. So AEV has a ton of products they made for the bison that are all actually work on this too. So I'm looking at getting those skid plates for underneath, you know, maybe not the whole set, but a lot of them. And then making some other armor myself that can go on the bottom. Maybe putting some tow mirrors on there so we can get a little bit better angle when we're towing and, you know, kind of just be more aware of everything when we're backing up and getting in through, you know, some tight obstacles and all that with that trailer. But other than that, I mean, this thing is, pretty good I, I really seriously have no complaints about it it's just awesome drives well on the road um, Chevy did a great job with this one um, I would love to try out the diesel option that seems pretty cool but here in California I think it might be a little bit more to worry about with the DF and all that stuff uh, right now it's just simple it works never have to worry about this truck my family and I are safe traveling in the country with it you know it's great yeah, so that's about it for this walk around, guys. This isn't a I dig the rig style because this isn't something that we like 
really cut and welded up and built from the ground up with our hands you know it's just kind of putting a bunch of mods on a, a modern truck so a little bit different style with this one but i know some people would want to know and you know it's, i get asked questions about this truck enough to where i think this video will probably help answer a lot of them as usual you know there's so much stuff to go over i probably forgot something uh, while i'm editing this i'm probably going to realize oh shoot i forgot to say this well if you have a question about it just put it down in the comments i'm pretty good at getting back to people so I'll let you know what it is. If you guys think there's some sort of video about the Chevy that you'd like more info on that I should make, put it down in the comments and let me know. I'll check it out. Guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.